Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In continuation with the hematopathology series, today let us learn a very important topic in hematopathology. A very commonly asked question in undergraduate medical student examinations that is chronic myeloid leukemia. This is in continuation with the myeloproliferative neoplasms which I have started in the previous session. So, in the next 10 to 15 minutes, let's learn about the etiopathogenesis, the clinical features, the morphological features, the diagnosis and treatment of chronic myeloid leukemia. So, chronic myeloid leukemia, as we all know, it is a myeloproliferative neoplasm which is defined by the BCR-ABL fusion gene, specifically BCR-ABL1 fusion gene. This is basically derived from the portions of the BCR gene on chromosome number 22 and the ABL gene on chromosome number 9. I mean, this fusion gene is derived from both the BCR gene and ABL gene on 22nd and the 9th chromosome respectively. Most importantly, it is characterized by neutrophil granulocytosis. Moving on to the epidemiology, the incidence of chronic myeloid leukemia is around 1 to 2 cases per lakh population with a slightly male preponderance. You know, the peak incidence of CML is in 5th to 6th decades of life. Yes, it can occur in children and adolescents. The predisposing factors for chronic myeloid leukemia include acute radiation exposure. Most important predisposing factor it is, well, there is a very little uh, inherited predisposition towards development of acute myeloid leukemia. Now, let us understand what is this primary gene or BCR ABL, ABL1 fusion gene. The word primary means that is formed by joining portions of two different genes and in this case it is the BCR gene on chromosome number 22 and the ABL1 gene on chromosome number 9. So, let us understand what exactly happens in CML. We, look into the, we are now looking into the pathogenesis of CML. So, this is a normal chromosome number 9 with ABL1 gene on the long arm of the chromosome number 9. ABL stands for Abelson Murine Leukemia Viral Oncogene Homolog 1. Normally, this encodes a tyrosine kinase protein and this is involved in growth and division. The second chromosome in question is chromosome number 22. In normal chromosome number 22, you have a BCR gene on the long arm of the chromosome number 22, which stands for breakpoint cluster region. It has a role in signal transduction, but the role is not fully understood. Okay. What you need to know at this point of time is that the tyrosine kinase, the size of tyrosine kinase is around 120 to 130 kilodalton in normal situations. These normal chromosomes, in the process of replication, the chromosomes can break. The breakage of chromosome is either because of normal replication error or because of oxidative stress or because of radiation exposure and other causes. Whatever is the cause, when the chromosomes break, in normal situations what happens, it tends to repair. You have lots of DNA repair genes which helps in repair. But in the case of chronic myeloid leukemia, something else happens and that is reciprocal translocation. Okay. Reciprocal translocation from chromosome number 9 to chromosome number 22. Vice versa, chromosome 22 to chromosome number 9. That's why it is reciprocal translocation. So, what happens here is that the part of the chromosome with the ABL1 gene gets fused into the chromosome with BCR gene. Okay. So, this is a shortened chromosome with a fusion gene and the fusion gene is of BCR ABL1 fusion gene okay? and this is also referred to as Philadelphia chromosome. Now, what this fusion gene encodes? It encodes a tyrosine kinase protein again 
because it is a fusion gene, the tyrosine kinase which is encoded is a mutated protein. Okay, and remember the size of this mutated protein is 210 kilodaltons, which is a bigger size as compared to the normal tyrosine kinase, which is around 120 to 130 kilodalton in size. This mutated protein, it is always active. It does not need any growth factors. It is always active without even signaling and that is the reason for development of chronic myeloid leukemia. We saw that the fusion of BCR-ABL1 takes place and we know the reason for this fusion which is classic translocation. So, 90% of the cases, the formation of BCR-ABL1 fusion gene is because of this reciprocal translocation. Whereas in around 10% of cases, around 5 to 10% of cases, though there is translocation, it is not really obvious because this translocation or the fusion gene is formed by cytogenetically complex rearrangements, also called as cryptic rearrangements. Okay? And hence, this is not routinely evident by cytoterping and therefore, this kind of rearrangements, you know, identify the BCR ABL1 fusion gene, you need to you know, uh, perform fluorescent in situ hybridization or polymerase chain reaction kind of tests. What is important also to note is that the cell of origin of CML is the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. Okay, because it is pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells, there is uninhibited proliferation of these pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. We'll talk about this a bit later. So, what we'll just try to understand uh, what happens in normal and what happens in CML. In normal, we know that the ABL1 tyrosine kinase is there, which is on the chromosome number 9, and it is responsible for the cell growth and survival. And remember, it needs a signal to be activated. What needs? The tyrosine kinase needs a signal to be activated, and those signals are hematopoietic growth factors. This is what happens in normal situations, normal conditions. In, but in patients with CML, you know, we know that there is a fusion gene. We know that the tyrosine kinase is a mutated tyrosine kinase, where the BCR part of the tyrosine kinase enforces something called dimerization, and it is called self activation. You know, it activates the ABL1 tyrosine kinase. You know, you don't need any signals for that activation. And hence, the ABL1 tyrosine kinase is constantly on. Okay, there is no feedback mechanism that the tyrosine kinase activity is stopped. Because it is constantly on, there is unregulated cell proliferation. We have seen that it affects the pluripotent stem cells. But for some unknown reasons, the preferential you know, cell proliferation is of granulocytic and megakaryocytic precursor progenitors. Okay, it's not the erythroid progenitors. It's predominantly the granulocytic and the megakaryocytic progenitors. And that's why the WBC count and the platelet counts are increased in these cases. What are the clinical features of CML? Having understood the concept of pathogenesis, why the CML occurs, why there is proliferation, let us see the clinical features. Most often, the onset is insidious. Patients might present with easy fatigability, weakness, weight loss and anorexia and that's because of anemia because there is no proliferation of red blood cells. Okay, In fact, there is anemia and there is hypermetabolic state because of increased turnover in the bone marrow and that is the reason for all these manifestations anorexia fatigability weakness and weight loss because of extensive hematopoiesis even in the extramedullary sites like spleen you have splenomegaly and most often the patients might present with dragging sensation in the abdomen if there is a splenic infarct the patients will present with acute onset of left upper quadrant pain. Okay, these are the various clinical manifestations of chronic myeloid leukemia. So, how do you diagnose? What are all the morphological features of CML? On peripheral smear examination, we should remember that the clinical um, the phase of CML is divided into two phases. One is chronic phase, another is blast phase. Earlier, there were three phases, chronic phase, aggravated phase and the blast phase. Now, the WHO has said that there are only two phases. Now, they have deleted the accelerated phase. Remember, it is only the chronic phase and the accelerated phase. In chronic phase, what do you see? You see leukocytosis. 
usually around 80 to 1.2 lakhs on an average per cubic mm of blood. What you see is neutrophils in various stages of maturation. Though I say various stages of maturation, it is the myelocytes and the segmented neutrophils which are predominant. Okay, of course you can find eosinophils. Of course you can find basophilic, you know, uh, basophils as well. This is the illustration showing granulocytes, basophilia, and eosinophilia. These are the, this is a promyelocyte. You have metamyelocytes. You have basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, and even bad forms. Because you see that it is neutrophils in various stages of maturation. Right, the myelocytes and the segmented forms of neutrophils are the predominant forms, as I told you. Well, at this stage, if you if you see a bone marrow, the bone marrow is hypercellular, and the reason for increased cellularity is massively increased numbers of maturing granulocyte precursors, as we saw. There can be increased eosinophils and basophils, and we also know megakeratocytes are also increased. Second important thing, one important peculiar feature is that you find the presence of sea blue histiocytes, which are basically macrophages with abundant wrinkled green blue cytoplasm. Looks like a sea blue. These are sea blue histiocytes in bone marrow of CML. Now, moving on to the blast phase, there is a criteria to diagnose blast phase. One, you should see more than 20% myeloid blasts in the peripheral smear or the bone marrow. Now, we know that if you see more than 20% of blast, it is called acute leukemia, right? Whereas in the case of chronic myeloid leukemia, you call it as CML blast phase if you find more than 20% myeloid blast. If you don't find increased blast, if you find presence of extramedullary blast formation in the spleen in the liver or anywhere else then also you can make it as blast phase of cml or if you find lymphoblasts in the peripheral smear or the bone marrow it's very important to note that lymphoblasts even if you find less than 10 percent you can call it as blast phase of cml how do you diagnose cml Morphological find findings as we just saw, okay, neutrophils in various stages of maturation, increased white cell count, increased platelet count, you find eosinophilia, you find basophilia and all those things. Right? The confirmatory diagnosis is always by either by karyotyping and fluorescent in situ hybridization studies. How do you treat CML? Because we know that CML is activation, un inhibited uncontrolled activation of tyrosine kinase you should treat with tyrosine kinase inhibitors okay and that's bcr abl inhibitors if you treat patients with bcl abr bcr abl inhibitors the remission is seen in greater than 90 percent of patients hematopoietic stem cell transplantation can be considered if the patient is relatively young and if it is done in the stable phase of young patients, it's almost curative in around 75% of cases. So that's about chronic myeloid leukemia. I hope the concepts are clear about chronic myeloid leukemia. It's a very simple thing. It's one of the important, it is one of the most important myeloproliferative neoplasm. In my earlier session, I had talked about differences between myeloproliferative neoplasms versus myelodysplastic neoplasms, right? There are very important myeloproliferative neoplasms including CML, essential thrombocytosis, polycythemia vera and so on. Today, we have discussed in detail about chronic myeloid leukemia. In my subsequent sessions, I will be discussing the other myeloproliferative neoplasms as well. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, Click on that like button, do comment if you have anything to ask or if you find this video useful, please do comment. Don't forget to subscribe because I will be, you know, coming out with many more such useful videos for you as a student and please do share. Thank you.